When I first picked up this Victorian era dresser with its pin and cove or nap jointed drawers, original stamped hardware, and these carved wood escutcheon plates, I wanted to strip back this crusty dark finish and restore it to the type of stained wood look it originally would have had. Unfortunately, a previous restoration attempt on this piece ended up eliminating that possibility for me. So here is the story of how I started a restoration job and why it turned into a makeover with paint instead. There are a lot of opinions about refinishing and especially painting antique furniture, what it does to the value of the piece and whether or not it's destroying a bit of history or conserving it. There are a massive amount of people out there who've somehow come to believe that every single piece of old wood is absolutely priceless and shouldn't be touched with anything other than a fresh coat of furniture oil. Unfortunately, I think that antiques roadshow mentality that nothing should ever be refinished is actually causing a ton of really great pieces to be left in a condition that's not preserving it and probably causing more damage to the wood in the long run. Furniture is meant to be used after all. Over time, these pieces become worn and damaged and refinishing it often increases its value and helps to maintain its story by keeping the piece in good working condition and protecting the wood from further damage. But now that I've got all that out of my system, let's get to work. I pulled out the drawers and removed these stamped metal handles and then vacuumed up the cobwebs from the inside. I also noticed that a couple of these blocks that stop the drawers from pushing in too far were broken, so I'll need to fix those at some point along the way. I gave the dresser a wash down with some simple green degreaser and warm water to remove any old furniture polish or wax residue that was on the surface before I started sanding so that I would avoid grinding any of that down into the porous wood. I turned on my box fan for a little while to let that dry out and brought the handles inside to my kitchen so that I could clean those up. I placed all of the little pieces into a Pyrex dish and then added some plain white vinegar and hot water to help me break up all of the grime that was on these and then used a little bit of Barkeeper's Friend on an old toothbrush just to scrub them down. Since the back plates and the handles are made from different metals, I wasn't really able to get them to match each other, but I'll show you what I do to fix that later on. Once the wood was dry, I was ready to start removing all of this failing finish. A lot of it was already chipping off on its own and I could even see the original color here where the handles were. So it looks to me like the original finish had worn away probably had a lot of damage and at some point someone came along with a darker stain and went right over top trying to camouflage that and now both of these finishes are flaking away. I hooked up my surf prep sander to my shop vac and started sanding with some 80 grit sandpaper to start removing all of this but after sanding down the first drawer I could see that the darker stain that was on top here had actually penetrated right through the original finish and sunk really deep down into the maple wood grain below. Whatever top coat was on here was also really gumming up my sandpaper. So on the next drawer, I decided to use my carbide scraper just to help me get that layer out of the way first. And then I decided to try some even more aggressive, like really aggressive 40 grit sandpaper to remove even more material and see if I could get to some fresh clear wood under this stuff. I would never normally use such a coarse grit because it will, no matter what, create those little pigtail swirlies in the wood and can remove material much more quickly than you realize and end up doing a lot of damage to the surface. But I thought for this, it was worth a shot. Over the next few days, because my hands couldn't take the vibration of the sander for more than a few hours at a time, I just kept up that strategy for the top and the sides of the dresser, the carbide scraper on the top layer, and then the 40 and 80 grits to remove as much of the dye stain as I could, but I was still having a really hard time getting everything to look even.
maple is kind of a splotchy blotchy wood already and then I had these huge patches of darkness I knew that if I couldn't get a nice even coloring across this wood then whatever stain I used was going to look just as blotchy and pretty awful I asked all of my friends over on Instagram and Facebook if they had any ideas that I could try out on here one suggested acetone and a scrub brush to lift the color out that didn't work someone suggested QCS stripper and a scrub brush that didn't work and then my last chance idea was some straight up laundry bleach so I opened up the garage door and saturated the entire dresser in a coat of bleach I left that to dry and then did another layer and left it overnight the next morning the wood was definitely lighter but most of the black dye was still there and it actually looked a little stronger now against the lighter wood around it so I ended up just rinsing all of that off with some clean water let everything dry out again really thoroughly and then continued on with my sanding to start smoothing things back out and closing up the wood grain again I switched to some 120 grit and then finally 180 grit carefully making sure to buff out any of those sanding squiggle marks from the 40 and 80 grits if I had planned on painting this from the get-go I would have only sanded maybe with a 120 and 180 just to remove whatever old finish was really loose and smooth things out but all of this extra sanding that I've done so far was in an effort to get a new stained finish. I needed to get these broken drawer stops out of the way so that I could clean up these rails. So I just used my little painter's tool and a hammer to knock those off and then some needle nose pliers to grab out the nails. I finished up with my sanding and then wiped everything down with a microfiber cloth. Since I was still trying to convince myself that I was going to be able to restain this, I went ahead and applied a coat of pre-stained wood conditioner. This is meant to seal up the top layer of wood fibers and create a nice uniform surface for a more consistent stain application. You brush or wipe it onto the surface and then wipe back any product that doesn't get absorbed and after about 30 minutes you can go ahead and apply your stain of choice. While that was sitting, I went back to the hardware. I wanted to get all of these pieces matching again, but still have a bit of an aged patina. So I used some antique gold rub and buff metallic wax over all of the pieces and then went over it again with the very tiniest bit of rub and buffs ebony to darken them up a little. By now it was clear that the wood conditioner didn't do anything but seal the deal that the dark dye stain on here wasn't going away and that any transparent stained finish that I put on this dresser was just going to look like garbage and I needed to change directions. So I took a few deep breaths, let the notion that I had been wasting my time with all of this sanding sink in and pulled out my milk paint collection to see what color options I had on hand. Before I started painting, I did decide to add a quick layer of clear shellac over top of the pre-stain just to seal in whatever dye might still be wanting to bleed up through my new finish and also any of the natural wood oils or tannins that are in this bare wood. I could have also used one of the white primers that I often use to seal in stains but since this is clear, it won't show in the grain and should help whoever chooses to refinish this thing next to remove my paint and get back to this wood stage much more easily. So once I had that applied, I left it to dry overnight because if you add milk paint over shellac too soon, it can cause the paint to crackle. I don't use milk paint too often anymore, but it's definitely a product that I absolutely adore. It's a natural paint that comes in a powdered form and it's made from milk protein, lime, and pigments. It's been used for centuries and is really known for its incredible durability and unique 
kind of authentically organic finish. I'm gonna lean right back into the old world kind of French country farmhousey feel. I chose this oyster bar color from Fusion's Milk Paint line. I think it's gonna look really nice with the hardware and make this dresser versatile so that it can be used in a variety of different spaces. Since it comes in a powder, you have to mix it with water to create your paint. And most brands call for a straight up one to one ratio. So I put half a cup of warm water in a jar and then added half a cup of my paint powder and mix that up really well. It also helps if you leave the paint to sit for about 10 or 15 minutes just to let all of the pigments dissolve and let the bubbles settle. Whenever I'm brushing, I like to just get the paint onto the surface and then immediately go back over it to get all of my brush strokes going in the same direction as the wood grain and keep it neat and tidy. It is completely normal with milk paint to see little streaks of different colors where the pigments aren't quite dissolved all the way or even chunks of lime on the surface. That's all just part of the milk paint aesthetic and experience. I also find it to be a lot more sheer than modern paints and it's much runnier too. So you always wanna be on the lookout for little drips. As I was brushing the paint onto the drawers, I was noticing all these little spots of what looks like oil creeping up through the paint, despite my attempts to seal all of that in with the shellac. Milk paint does often have a mind of its own and we already know that these surfaces are trouble. So I decided to just go with it and I'm gonna let it do whatever it's doing. Once I finished my first coat, I screwed the lid back onto my jar and just popped my brush into a plastic bag. Some milk paint brands also recommend that you refrigerate your paint once it's been mixed up. And after about an hour, I was ready for my second coat. You could sand the first coat with a fine grit paper, but I thought I was okay here. This light color will definitely need three coats for full coverage, so I'll just sand before my last layer. And before my last coat, I lightly went over everything with this 400 grit sandpaper, remixed my paint a little bit to reincorporate everything and then got it on there. When my paint was dry, I did notice a bit of crackling happening just on the top of the dresser, but I'm okay with that. Now I was ready to sand it smooth one more time, and I wanted to go a little bit heavier around the edges and spots that it would naturally wear down over time. And then because this paint is porous, I'm gonna seal it with some hemp oil. This oil is going to absorb or soak down into the paint and then harden as it cures to create a nice water resistant finish. It's actually a food safe, completely natural sealer and although it's got this green tint to it, it does not leave a green finish behind. 
It will richen up the milk paint color though and make it look more like the color on the package instead of the duller kind of chalkier finish that it has without the sealer. I brush the oil over the whole dresser, even on the insides of the drawers and let it soak in for about a half an hour. And then I came back with a clean rag and just wiped up any excess that was still sitting on the surface. Right before I was ready to bring the dresser inside, I realized that I'd forgotten about the drawer stops. I cut a bunch of these lattice strips down for another project a few weeks ago, and I think they'll work perfectly for this. I'm not sure if you can see here, but there's a little line scribed into the wood where the stops need to sit. So I just matched the pieces of wood up with that and nailed them in place. These are going to catch the bottom lip of the drawer so that it doesn't get pushed into the dresser too far and sits nice and flush with the frame. I thought I was all done with this, but once I brought it inside and grabbed my camera to take the after shots, I thought that the escutcheon plates needed some more of that metallic wax so that they match the hardware. So after going through this whole process with me, I would love to hear your thoughts on refinishing antiques like this. Do you think I destroyed the value of this piece or have I extended and conserved its history for a little while longer? Should I have left it alone as it was? Or do you think it's got a better chance at finding a new home to take care of it after this makeover? Even though it tried me all the way along, I am really happy with this finished look. Thank you for sticking with me through the journey on this one. I will leave some more furniture makeovers here for you to watch next and I will catch you all next time.